Dr. Alex Rocatelli joins us now to talk about, of all things, crabgrass. Alex, there's kind of a love and hate relationship with crabgrass. Exactly, exactly right. That's how I would define it. Crabgrass uh, in row crops is a terrible weed. Everybody knows that. But when it comes to forage, crabgrass is a very good forage. It can produce high amount of forage and also with good quality during summer, that's a delicate time to produce forage. So that's why we have that kind of relationship. Let's talk about some of the research that you and the team have done. There's actually a few varieties that you've looked at. Yes, that's true. Right now in Oklahoma, we have about four or five crabgrass varieties available for forage. And in the last two years, we had evaluated them in Grad County, Chickasha. And yes, crabgrass is a tremendous forage. Like in the last two years, we could produce about 3.5 to 4.5 tons per acre total season of forage and the quality was very good to excellent. Uh, it ranged from 19% crude protein to 17, 16% and a TDN value around 60%. That everything that a producer might be looking for their cattle. For producers who may want to consider crabgrass as a forage op option, how do they get started? I would say that right now is the best time to seed crabgrass. Uh, end of April until mid of June is a good time to seed. If they really want to go to and start seeding crabgrass, I would say first thing, soil sampling. Make sure that your pH is higher than 5.8. Even if it's 5.8, I would say lime and raise it up uh, to around 6.2, 6.3. Apply P and K according uh, to the soil analysis, and then we can think about prep the, the, the seed bed. Seed bed would be like we do for alfalfa, a very firm seed bed, and when placing the seed, crabgrass is a very small seed like alfalfa, so we need to place it like no more than one third of an inch at the soil, into the soil, and after we need to press with something for we have a very good soil seed contact. So that's what I would like to say if somebody really want to establish a crabgrass. So as it grows then, how about guidance on grazing and haying? Right. So I would say that for grazing crabgrass, you can start grazing crabgrass when it catches uh, in growth at least six inches of growth. But I would say you can leave grow as much as 12 inches and so it start to graze. At 12 inches, we are going to have a good amount of forage and also still we are going to be holding a good quality on the grass. So that's why I would say if you can postpone for 12 inches and when grazing, grazing down to 3 inches. Don't go lower than 3 inches. Crabgrass is an annual plant, so differently from Bermuda grass or even alfalfa, it doesn't have any energy underneath in the soil to regrow. So it really needs that remaining leaves and stems on the ground to catch up in regrowth. You and your colleagues have a, a fact sheet about crabgrass in rotation with graze out wheat. Yes, actually crabgrass looks like that fits pretty well in a system when, when we finish grazing out wheat, it's going to start to grow and it's going to fill it up all the summer that during the time that we are going to have a fallow in a winter wheat system, normally what happened here in Oklahoma. So if you are considering a grazing out system and in that same field you would like to have some forage during summer, uh, consider reading that fact sheet because we give uh, like a good information on how to make this system happen. Okay, we'll check it out. Thanks a lot, Alex. And for a link to that fact sheet, go to sunup.okstate.edu.